Welcome to Research Talk and in this video, which is the final part of validity and reliability in qualitative research, we will discuss some more ways of improving uh, trustworthiness in, in, in qualitative studies. A very common way of improving the trustworthiness of qualitative studies is peer review process. So what we do in peer review after we collect the data and, and we uh, start uh, uh, analyzing the data, we talk to the people who are in some way an expert on those topics or have some knowledge about those topics. And we, we try to understand what is their take on what we are studying and what the data, emerging data, you know, so what they think about those emerging data that we are, uh, you know, analyzing. So uh, let me explain it uh, with the example here. So uh, international student experiences in counselor education programs. So what I can do uh, after, you know, initially collecting the data and having the tentative themes emerging out of the data, I can talk to the people I think who have uh, some good knowledge about this uh, phenomenon. So I can go and talk to the International Student Office director uh, who has a good experience. And, and I can ask her like, this is what is coming out of the data. What is your views on this? Uh, I can also uh, talk to uh, my research colleagues or, or faculty and, and discuss about like, okay, what you think about this process of data analysis or what you think about the data collection methods and, uh, and the initial findings. So peer review or examination is a very common way of, of improving uh, trustworthiness in, in qualitative studies. Another way to improve uh, the trustworthiness of a qualitative study is by providing a rich and thick description of the study. So what you can do, you can, uh, when you are preparing the manuscript, you, you talk in detail about how did you started this study, how did you contacted the participants, how did you conduct the interview, how did you, uh, you know, made all the collection of the data, how did you analyze the data, how did you maintain your journal, how did you integrate it, your journal data into the final write-up and data analysis. So in short, what you do, you provide a very rich context of this study and the findings so that anyone reading the study can contextualize uh, the findings All right, so uh, another way of uh, improving trustworthiness of a qualitative study is by maximum variation. What is maximum variation? So as a researcher, you purposefully seek research participants who have a wide range of experience of the phenomenon that you are interested to explore. So let me explain it further. So let's take the example of this uh, hypothetical research study, international students' experiences in counselor education programs. So to, to have the maximum variations in terms of selection of participants, what I can do? One thing I can do is when I'm selecting the participants, I can select participants based on various locations or various countries they have come to United States. So I can select some participant, one participant from Asia, one from South America, Africa, Australia. So try to create a, you know variation in terms of where they came from. I can also select participants based on their age. So I can create variation so I can select one participant, let's say, who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say 25 years old versus someone who is more older. So kind of I can create variation in terms of their age as well. Uh, I can create variation in, in terms of how long they have stayed here. So I can select some participants who are, let's say, just, uh, you know, spent one year in in, in United States. Uh, and I can also select participants who have spent, let's say, three or four years. So having this variation helps researcher to, to create a very rich description and, and, and uh, uh, of, of the phenomenon that, that I'm interested in. So maximum variation is, is, is a very common way, which is commonly used 
when uh, qualitative researchers select participants. So these are all the methods that you can use when you are conducting a qualitative study to, uh, to enhance the trustworthiness of your study. Uh, we have discussed in the last three videos multiple ways of, of uh, enhancing the trustworthiness in, in qualitative study. So one question that arises here is how many, you know, out of these nine, ten methods that I discussed in the last three videos, how many methods should a researcher adopt in, in, in a study to make sure that the, the study's findings have adequate uh, trustworthiness. Uh, in my experience as a researcher, I would suggest uh, one should incorporate at least two to three methods of, of, uh, uh, of all the methods that we have discussed, uh, which could be helpful in enhancing the trustworthiness of the findings. Uh, and, and, and another question is, which one should we use? So uh, it depends. It depends based on uh, what resources you have and what topic you are ex exploring and how easy or difficult it is to, to adopt a particular method uh, of, of improving the trustworthiness. So based on your topic, based on uh, uh, the resources are available to you, you can decide. But I, I suggest that you adopt at least two to three methods of improving uh, the trustworthiness of your findings. Because when you, uh, you know, write your manuscript, then you have to, and send it for publication, you have to convince the reviewer that you have taken all the necessary steps and the findings that have come up out of your study are trustworthy. All right, so this is the end of the video and thank you so much for, for listening all these three parts. I hope this, these three videos on, on validity and reliability in qualitative studies would be really helpful for you uh, when you conduct your own study. Thank you so much for listening to me and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.